going on today, guys? Um, I haven't made a video in a while. Uh, if some of you that follow along would know, I got hurt and had knee surgery uh, last summer, and it has significantly slowed me down. So I've been running behind on all my customer stuff, and I didn't feel like I should be taking time to make uh, silly YouTube videos if I'm not even getting to my customers' yards. Um, despite the uh, the uh, thrown together nature and uh, poor quality of these videos, it does still take time to put them together. But anyway, we're going to get out and try to spray uh, some St. Augustine centipede type grasses today. Uh, we got uh, one little roadblock in the way, and as you saw in the intro, uh, we've got a nice uh, south, north, west, east early northern southern southern eastern breeze blowing at about 742.68 knots that's weather terms i guess but it's see I, i'm a meteorologist too you didn't even know that amateur so uh it, it is challenging to spray in these windy conditions and we'll talk about why of course the uh one of the main concerns of spraying in the wind like this is uh, off-target uh, spraying. So uh, the wind could blow your herbicide <laughs> onto uh, bushes, uh, trees, uh, dogs, cats, etc. Um, and so you could kill something like that that you don't intend to. Or the other off uh, deal is you not being able to get it uh, on the ground where you want it and not be very successful at uh, killing your target weeds um different kind of sprayers you'd want to take different uh precautions in the wind the, the best precaution is just to stay home on a day like today but i don't have that luxury <coughs> we'll talk about some differences in some of the different kind of sprayers and go from there stay tuned this is my trusty uh warm season permagreen you can see the nozzles on the permagreen are mounted really low and kind of spray in a different way. They spray out and down. This one, it, it sprays out of here and kind of projects like a mushroom out in front of the machine. We'll draw a diagram. But the low nature of where that uh, is. <coughs> oh, we'll have to edit that out. The low nature of where that is um can kind of help you in the wind and it not uh disturb it as bad this is my uh illustration of what a boom sprayer would look like um see this is your boom and it's going to be you know they're varying heights off the ground depending on you know how your sprayer is set up but it's going to be a little higher off the ground and it's going to have to spray out in these fan uh shape deals here to just coat your target as you go by generally smaller drops out of something like this so i mean when i sprayed with a boom sprayer i always used a what we call it ai nozzle it doesn't mean that's not uh, the same kind of ai that there might even be one sitting there. there it is bear with me My junk here something like this and if you can see it's got a hole in the side there that draws in air as it sprays and uh makes the uh, drop bigger and heavier and when you're spraying these windy conditions that helps you because it will uh it won't be as easily so i'm clean, cleaning up my messes like that it won't be as easily affected by the wind because it's a little bigger a little heavier so it'll drop straight down if you got a finer spray at with this high off the ground you're definitely going to get a lot of blowback onto your yourself and uh now why did i spit when i said that this just scared me i guess <laughs> and uh, uh and, and it's possibly onto uh shrubbery and trees that kind of thing so uh your your likelihood of an off target uh uh application when you're in these windier conditions with a smaller, uh, uh, like a standard fan tip nozzle uh, is definitely 
gonna go up because it's gonna be making that mist. It's high off the ground, so it's got a lot of room to get blown around and, and, and sprayed off target. So if you're gonna be using a boom, go with these AI nozzles and uh, you, your chances are, are a little better. But with the permagreen, it sprays kind of low and I'll draw a uh, diagram what that looks like now. All right, this is me on the permagreen with my, with my bum knee. I have uh, got much more of this now. But anyway, it, it sprays from pretty low, a very big heavy drop out of the uh, out of the flood jet nozzle. And from overhead, the pattern would look somewhat like this. Um, obviously in a heavy wind, that pattern could be distorted and that's gonna be a problem, but it's so low to the ground, your, your chances are a little less of it being distorted. I mean, in a wind like today, I mean, I, I, I'm just gonna have to go out there and see how it goes and be very cognizant of which way the wind's blowing. Uh, sometimes you could even, if you got a relatively big property and the wind's blowing from a certain direction, you're just gonna have to make your passes where the wind would be at your back. Uh, so you would have to go go down, spray them with the wind at your back, turn around, come back up, not spraying, and then just go back down spraying. Uh, and it, it will broaden that pattern a bit too if the wind's at your back, so that might, uh, decrease your efficacy of your spray because it will kind of spread it out over a wider area. That's ridiculous. All right, it's, it's my arc. I'll try to get out and uh, show you a little bit of what I got going on if I can get, uh, if it you know even works for me today because uh, it is so windy. Maybe when I get in some of these neighborhoods in a little more confined space with the trees and all, it won't be as bad. Um, trying to think if there's anything major anybody's missed. Uh, you know, March Madness around here is a pretty big deal in uh, in North Carolina. Uh, we had several of our teams do really well. Both my kids go to the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, so I gotta hold my nose and somewhat cheer for them sometimes too. But NC State showed them up this year, so that's been great. And uh, Duke's a North Carolina school, but I don't know if we really count. I got some customers and all that went to Duke, but I don't really know very many, very many Dukies from that actually live in North Carolina. It's just just me, but uh, anyway. anyway, let's get to it. Yeah, it looks like the wind's calmed down quite a bit. <laughs> all right, this is a uh, little St. Augustine yard. It's got the, uh, I don't even know what the hell that is, but I'm fixing to kill it. All right, but in transition, you want to be pretty careful with it. It's a little on the edge where I'd want to fertilize it, but I think we're well out of the, it's, what the, it's uh, like April 12th today. So I think we're out of the danger of much more frost. It was, it, was, it got close last weekend to a frost, but not quite there. But anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and fertilize it too but uh, I'm gonna use something like uh, atrazine in a very small, like a uh, quarter ounce of methyl, furon methyl per acre, and a crop oil concentrate. Try to get ourselves a quarter ounce of methyl, furon methyl. And I can tell you this uh, flat cap measuring thing is about as accurate is the national news, which is to say not very much, but there's our quarter ounce. And I keep a, a mark uh, old Prodiamine jug since I have so many of them for uh, specific things. And of course we're gonna put our uh, pound of uh, Prodiamine in here. So we're gonna put these together in the jug. Mix them up. And we're gonna get our, our atrazine as a liquid. We're gonna dump that in there after we get this. We'll put some water in this, mix it up. Then we'll put our atrazine in and get the spray in. All right, atrazine's not really a uh, do-it-yourselfer type of product. It's a restricted use product. It's uh, extremely mobile in the soil. 
So don't spray that stuff anywhere near water or any kind of ditches or anything that you're worried about it carrying it to another water supply. So uh, just got to be very cognizant of where you're, where you're shooting your atrazine. And the crop oil concentrate I use in conjunction with it kind of helps hold it in the top uh, profile of the soil. So work with it like that. You can find atrazine on some uh, uh, products you'd find at Light Lows. Your Scott's uh, Bonus S has atrazine on it. Uh, I, I have used that like a long time ago. Um, it's, it's pretty high nitrogen for a uh, centipede St. Augustine fertilizer. Um, it has the atrazine on it, so I mean it can kill weeds for you. It's, you just get those rates right. It, it's a it's a real slow release urea, so I mean that's the, I guess that's their their way of getting around it, burning the grass. But uh, you can you can damage Saint Augustine with bonus Be careful. Neighbor has some annual ryegrass that has encroached in the yard as, as well as some little sprouts over here and there. But annual ryegrass will not like this. It's breaking off. Here's another one. I mean, of course, by this time of year, you'd like for them to look better, but uh, I mean, temperatures have been up and down. We've had some nights in the 30s. It was in the 30s last weekend at night. Um, this is was sodded just like last year so um sometimes we'll come out of winter with a little fungus in them too from from the wet winter and the fall before but it's not really active so there's not much you can do about it but uh this one might benefit from being thatched or verticut or something just to get it woke up good but i'm just gonna fertilize it pretty good and see how it bounces out of it keep our neighborhood to putting in fiber internet i think but I'm making a damn mess out of it and i guess that's not too bad this is <laughs> mostly centipede but he's got a lot of fescue in it um this is one of my wife's friends so i take care of this but uh you would think what i was spraying would just mop the floor <laughs> this fescue i guarantee you it won't kill it i got atrazine uh, methyl furon uh, all really hard hitting stuff against cool season grass but i have a feeling it's not going to phase it we'll see how we do against it but uh more than likely in the summertime i have to try to come at it with a like a celsius uncertainty combo even celsius alone not very effective against uh that you if i sprayed it on a tall fescue yard it would uh kill it bare to the ground but spraying it on this uh mixed stuff with this old hard wild fescue in it it ain't gonna touch it but uh we'll, we'll, we'll see how the how the future holds a little challenging to get us soon be but you would think things like atrazine and mesofuron would kill it right away it'll it'll probably damage it but we'll, we'll see all right i managed to get some spray today and I'm, I'm wrapped up for the day um i guess no no uh super big thing to learn out of this uh what uh we're generally spraying this time of year for weed control in centipede and saint augustine yards is uh things like uh atrazine or simazine combined with uh, a, a very low dose of mesofuron methyl along with uh, a pre-emergent like prodiamine uh the yard's pretty well established and not extra shady i'm going up to a pound of active ingredient i mean the not active ingredient the actual product uh, so 16 ounces of the uh 65 wdg per diamine on that but uh here's some of the things we're using i wrote them out is it is it showing up let's see all right like atrazine simazine 
uh, change up to some extent and when it warms up uh, for good and the grass is green uh, uh, the regular maintenance in those yards is going to be things like change up or celsius um, I don't mind combining these with other things either uh, speed zone southern I, is okay I haven't had tremendous luck with that I don't spray a pile of it um, but these two just, just spray tons and tons of that uh, Sulfur sulfuron is a uh, uh, certainty um, that is very helpful in uh, these type of grasses uh, for sedge control along with other grassy weed control. Um, so you could combine things like your Celsius and sulfur sulfuron, your change up, and your, we're just going to call this uh, certainty for, for easier pronunciation sake, your change up and your certainty even your atrazine and your uh, certainty. Uh, uh, flazol sulfuron is uh, katana. Uh, probably not so much in St. Augustine, but definitely uh, okay in some of your centipede uh, lawns for really hard to kill uh, weeds like uh, the one that I showed you had the uh, had the fescue clumps in it. You might could uh, come at it with some katana and uh, the MSM is the methyl furon methyl. It's pretty much a staple sulfonylurea to add in on your treatments for any of these. Uh, very low amounts on this uh, MSM, especially in uh, Centipede and St. Augustine, and definitely especially in this time of year when they're transitioning from dormant to uh, green. Uh, no more than a quarter of an ounce per acre this time of year. Uh, when it warms up into the summer and the grass is pretty strong and vigorous, uh, you go up to a half an ounce. Uh, in St. Augustine, uh, things like the change up, I know, are, are much lower rate. I think the change up is like an ounce per thousand, maybe. Uh, so, you know, for 43 ounces per acre, something like that, 44 ounces. Um, that's really about it. You know, when the when the weather gets warm and the grass is green, hot weather especially, we're probably in centipede in St. Augustine. Probably most of the time, Celsius or change up is what you're gonna. Is what I'm gonna be using. Oh, I didn't put it up here, but this uh, this is pretty much something I put in almost everything I spray. Uh, uh, Sol Fenter S U L F E N T E N T. Sulfentrazone, listen, spelling. Uh, Sulfentrazone at about six ounces per acre is uh, something that I add into a lot of sprays that I do. Um, that is a that's a low rate. That's uh, kind of low on the for the label. Four four to six ounces. Um, oops, not sixteen. Four to six ounces. <laughs> anyway, uh, adding that in several times throughout the year. It's really going to help you on your sedge controls and it'll really uh, boost up the burn down power on some of your other herbicide combinations. So that is a kicker that I use an awful lot across almost every turf type. Um, at much higher rates than that though, uh, especially depending on what kind of surfactant you're using on some really nice <laughs> lush grass, it can, it can bronze it a bit. Um, so you got to be careful for that. All right, there you go. Centipede and St. Augustine spraying in the spring. Check you out next time.